Okay, so we're going to be using the Max ECU Street. This is the um, minimum sort of package I like to sell. The Max ECU Mini is the one below this. Nothing wrong with it at all, and it has its place. However, most people that buy the Minis end up wanting to add wideband and there's not enough sensors and all the rest of it. Now these are such a negligible difference between this and the Mini. My advice is to buy this package. Now, we'll, when you buy the package new, um, plenty of dealers now around the world for Max ECU um, and you'll get a lovely comprehensive package depending on which one you get. This is the premium, this comes with the, the extra bits of wiring loom. Um, so let, let's just run through it. So we've got a bunch of stickers, these are, um, you'll get a bunch of stickers that come with it. Um, nice little quick start guide, A4 wiring diagram, exceptional, and we get the good stuff. So we get the Max ECU Street, it's a lovely, lovely package, um, all aluminium great we get there if you buy them from us we give you the mounting kit as well which is essentially some nice um, AV mounts to uh, keep it nice and safe um, you'll get your your LSU 4.2 wideband sensor you'll get your flying loom which is a couple of two or three meters depending on which one you buy USB lead piece of 4 mil pipe various fittings for map sensor basically that's what the 4 mil pipes for you'll run that off to your map sensor if you need a map sensor uh, the GT150 connector which is um, you can use here um, to plug into this this you can wire to your car and this is part of the loom you can also re-pin back to that but we'll get to that in a bit and then you get your um, your JPT connector which you can connect to your wideband uh, so that's our basic package and that's what we're going to be fitting onto this car so what we'll do now is we will go and have a look at starting to build a loom up this is be a road car loom um, so we're going to use braid we're going to braid this it's going to be a road car we're not going to get involved in um, you know, high quality heat shrink, the DR25, anything like that, it's going to be a nice, plain, simple, braided loom, which will suit most cars of this sort of nature on the v on, on the road. So, right, let's go on and do that. Rightio, so we're going to build up our loom. We've got the fly loom from the Max ECU pack. So we'll just get this out. Now, hopefully, you'll have gone through and realised what you need, gone through like a, I use an Excel spreadsheet. I'll put a link to the Excel spreadsheets, the blank ones that I do. Um, it's very basic, but it just might save you 10, 15 minutes of work. Um, what you'll need to do is go through and see exactly what you're going to need and what you're going to not need in these loops. So there will be um, extra I.O. that you're going to that you're going to not require. Like, you know, this 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 little escort, you know, it's got very few sensors. It's very basic. So we don't need a lot of it. Now, don't get me wrong. We'll leave a few I.O. Um, we'll leave a couple of extra inputs and a couple of extra outputs here and there. We'll put them on some um, connectors inside the car and outside the car, and just in case. Um, and it will save a bit of messing around in the future. But also, we don't need all of these, like for ignition drivers, for argument's sake. We don't need them all, so we can just lose them. So what we'll do is we'll we'll take the back off this Molex connector. We'll de-pin the ones we don't want, and we'll just lose them out of the loom, so we haven't got a mess about them. Right, the connector on the ECU, there's no real drama with it. Um, get the back shell off. Uh, just pull the lock tab out, little screwdriver in the back there. Get him out. And then we've got a couple of tools, one for the bigger pins, one for the smaller ones. Again, they're on my website, but there's plenty of these sorts of things available for the Max ECU, um, for the Molex connectors as well. Um, removing a pin's dead easy. Let's just, um, I know we don't need anything from row B. Uh, so let's just get a cable we want to lose so this is uh, ignition driver 3 dead easy goes in there little push and then extract that little puppy from there job done easy as that so do that with all of the cables that you don't need um, extract them right out of the loom get rid of them keep them back something else you never know might be useful um, so yeah we do that with all of the ones we don't need let's get on and do that Right, yeah, we've uh, thinned that down quite nicely, so then it's literally a case of uh, clicking that back in, shoving that back on, nice little zip tie around there, and uh, we are ready to go and uh, build a wiring loom. How exciting. Right, yeah, okay, so I've stripped the loom back, as you saw, pulled out some of the wires that we don't require. Um, all of my outputs are going to be inside the vehicle, so I pulled round, uh, I, I trimmed back our other GPO out, 
um, and we're going to still you utilize the GT150 connector so what I'm going to do now is I've measured between where I'm going to locate the ECU and the bulkhead we're going to put a grommet in here so what we're going to do now is is just braid this lot up so that we've got an open-ended loom into the actual through the bulkhead into the engine bay um, we'll just braid this up so that it's nice reconnect this into there um, and then we can move forward Right, so we're going to braid our loom. Um, this is like a sleeving, I buy this from Hilltop Products. It's a, oh, how do I pronounce this? It's a polybutylene terephalate, I, I believe is how you pronounce it, some, something like that. But it's, it basically, it would stand minus 70 to plus 150 degrees um, C. It, it's, it's perfect for the environment that we want to use it in, in an engine bay. So. <laughs> Most people will get hold of this, get a pair of scissors, knife, some side cutters, whatever, and that. And it's just to show you. Basically, don't don't do this with this stuff because it's it just ends up looking horrendous. So, chop with some scissors. Now it, it looks obviously fairly rough as it is, but by the time you've got a few cables in there, mess around with it a bit, then all of a sudden we've got this just just absolute mess. So. I use a, uh, this is um, this is for cutting rope actually, but any, this this just heats up, so anything that's that can heat up, you could probably just get like a, a lighter and a, and a knife blade to be quite honest with you, but what this does is it just heats up and then we can just, um, we can just trim this back anywhere we want to go, cut that out, um, and what that does is it, it just seals all the filaments over the end, so what happens now is 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 it doesn't do what we were trying to do earlier on. It stays in in place. It stays nice. It's uh, so cut your braid, cut your uh, sleeving with it with something hot. Um, that ideally, but you know, I know obviously quite a few people are only going to plan on making one two looms in their life. So something like that is probably not ideal. But like I say, a, a hot blade um, with a lighter will will sort it, and it makes such a nice job of it um, over scissors and because I'm telling you it'll end up looking horrendous so do that do that This is about my point of transition through the bulkhead, so I've, I've pulled me uh, my grommet up through. I'm just going to, uh, what I'm going to do is around the uh, the point of transition, um, I'm just going to run a bit of heat shrink along here. We'll put a little piece here, and then when we've um, test fitted it, um, I'll put like a, a larger piece. That way the, the grip around the inside of our rubber grommet has got something smooth to go on, so we'll pro provide some level of um, you know, waterproof uh, other than cofillery, but we'll try our best there. But it also gives us that, that, that little bit more sort of rigidity around these areas. So we'll, uh, we'll put a bit of heat shrink on there now. Okay, so the next thing that I do is this is this is where our um, solid piece of uh, adhesive heat shrink will go, where we go through the bulkhead. So this is where I like to sort of do some of my joins. So 
um, our zero volt, our sensor ground for instance, I've got a couple extra and we've got three five volts. So these are just soldered, um, some adhesive heat shrink put over the top. Obviously in the motorsport world we wouldn't be doing that, we'd be using like a splice crimp or something, um, keeping them out of the way and no solder in there. But again for this road loom there's plenty of OEM manufacturers where they've got solder in them, so for an OEM loom, this is for, for, a, for, a, for a, a road loom this is absolutely fine and will last years and will give no problems. Okay, it's a nice time as well I think in this transition to start pairing up some of the cables and start twisting them together so we'll pick our uh, a sensor ground and we'll just just do our air temperature we'll just pull them back out of the loom and what we'll do is we'll just start twisting those up together and then we'll have them all starting in the same point same time um, try not to do this with a drill if you can because it will uh, it will deteriorate the cable somewhat so what we'll do is we'll do this by hand each one of those cables against its ground same with the injectors actually just try and pair them up nice keeps it um, a little bit nicer in the loom itself and it, it will pair them up just uh... okay so we've got the majority of our um, ins and outs all paired up and and twisted up nicely so the next things we've got to consider are um, our lambda so what I like to do when I'm doing a braided loom is we'll find our lambda cable and then what we'll do is we'll just get a couple of a couple of few bits of bits of heat shrink and and keep all the relevant cables up together so our lambda we've obviously got the heater control wire and the 12 volt feed to it so just a couple of small bits of uh, heat shrink like this I use adhesive usually a couple of three of those up three just keep it in the same in the same part it'd be easier for us when we come to actually start braiding the loom up um, so our cam sensor we've got a 5 volt supply too as well so we'll do the same with that because we've got a hall sensor in this particular case we have a um, a VR sensor for our crank so we don't need to worry about an extra 5 volt supply to that so let's go ahead and do that now okay we've grouped them all up um, I'm just going to go along now and uh, put some tie wraps around these this I know um, they'll all be grouped still here so we'll put some tie wraps around here and then uh, we'll go and put it in the car and have a good old measure up I reckon one of the worst bits about the job really is uh, I'm going to drill holes in someone's car, so I'm going to use the this grommet, it's like a nice rubber bulkhead grommet. This this just happens to be a really nice size for the Max Molex connectors because the whole Molex connector will come through that hub. Um, so I'm going to try and get the hole in under the throttle bodies against the bulkhead, just, just to the right slightly and, and lower to the fuse box. So I'm going to remove the bodies, put some tape on the bulkhead, have a bit of a measure up and some holes. <laughs> the perfect crime. We've got some cleaning up to do, but uh, yeah, happy days. I should have been in a body shop, really. <laughs> yeah, just protect any uh, little ledge that we may have created. That's the perfect little hole. I'm really happy with that. Lovely. Okay, so ECU is mounted. Uh, I've just made an aluminium plate that picks up off of the heater blower just there so uh, quite straightforward literally li nice piece of aluminium plate I've put some nut certs in the back screwed these rubber bobbins in just to have a little bit of a mount on them um, yes yeah, it's, it's nice actually it's just a perfect place it's quite convenient because I can just get to the USB plug there in the future and I'll just bring the loom in down around here and through our hull okay so push the loom in from this side hot grommet there um, which is all we hidden up by the very top of the carpet it'll never get touched we'll just make a couple of uh, little brackets to hold that cable up there out the way of this and just nice and safe so it doesn't abrase on anything and then uh, I think again that's that job 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 let's get into the engine bay and uh, get some of the rest of it sorted right I've popped our ECU back into the bracket now um, and I put on our, our freshly uh, twisted up loom so what I'm going to do now is just refit the the bodies um, and then pull each piece of wire back leave a, an inch or so on the end of each one once I'm happy um, and then we can actually remove this again and start to braid it properly ready for the finished article and there we go once we've removed it from the car we've then we basically all we've got to do now is braid up these little bits terminate them with the connectors on the end and uh, hey presto we have a nice car loom that's uh, ready to rock should probably just go through a bit of braiding so I've, I've nearly finished this now but um, so we've, we've got a couple of 
these are just grinds here which are going on for the the fan and the, the coil uh, so the easiest way to get this braid on is to once we've cut it with our however we're going to cut it for something we'll cut it cut it with something hot um, sleeve it over um, I've just got a bit of tape here but I'll just go over so I would usually now the reason I don't cut it the length um, so I don't get, get me tape measure over there and just say well that's like you know 150 mil whatever and the reason I don't do that is is fairly obvious if, but if no one's said it before it might be worth mentioning but as it expands it contracts in length so you'll sleeve this 150 mil over and it'll it'll leave you like like 60 mil left on the end so you'll be sitting there going bugger so uh, what I would do is is horse it on and leave this end you know the end that you're sleeving it onto leave there the exact amount of distance that you want um, onto the other end onto the bare end once you've got that there it's, it's easy enough we just get our um, rope cutting tool or other whatever you like to do um, plunge that in through there and then you can just push the braid over and then you've got the exact length that you require job done right so that is uh, that's this loom braided so what we need to do now is tidy up with a bit of a adhesive heat shrink okay so what I'm gonna do now is um, some more adhesive heat shrink um, again you can just scissor this that's no problem at all what we're gonna do is slide it all the way up through we're gonna cut the bits here which is about where our grommets gonna be um, so I'm gonna slide it all the way up um, I'll tell you what, let's do that now. So at this point, where if nobody's told you to, to cauterise this stuff to cut it, you will be cussing. Um, all of this braid will be just all over the place and it will look like an absolute shit show. So, what we want to do now is, uh, is tie wrap these up together. So, I know these are 50 mil, they're 2 inch, so we want to come back roughly half that half that length into there and want to tie these up nice and tight so make sure they look half sensible as well they're all coming out in the same sort of area right nice and tight and then we can uh, poke this bit of heat shrink over there again this is the adhesive stuff so once it's in there once we've heated this that's done and dusted and then the same this end we know roughly where we've got to be right okay now what we've got to do is heat gun, this stuff, heat gun this stuff up, get it in there nice and tight and bonded. Um, yeah, let's do that in a minute. Right, so all of our ends have now been... Um, heat shrunk on, all adhesive heat shrink, so we're beginning to look like a sensible wiring loom now, we're getting halfway there aren't we, so um, next order of business is to label said wiring diagram, we don't know where all these go, well we do don't we at the moment, but um, when they're in the engine bay we may not, and also somebody in the future may need to remove the engine, put it back in, do whatever, so it'd be really convenient for them to know that that was injector one, Injector 4, wide band, whatever. So, next order of business, labels. Right, um, we're printing onto heat shrink. We've made all our labels. Well, these are the 12 mil ones. Um, we're now going to put them back onto the braid, heat shrink them on, and then put some clear heat shrink over the top of them. Something to consider. If you are putting a boot onto said cable, the boot may come back to there. So, if you measure back 10 mil and a heat shrinker label there look pretty bloody stupid and fairly bloody useless so just a consideration on every cable you go to do if you're going to put this is a this is an ev6 for an injector for argument's sake i know that we haven't we won't we won't be booting those so we'll probably come back 15 mil from the back of there and then put our label on. just something to consider also when heat shrinking them on um real low temperature this stuff this this heat shrink does shrink back at a low temperature which is great it doesn't melt this stuff so okay let's get that dealt once we've labeled them we'll uh, just put like a bit of clear heat shrink over the top of that just give it some sort of protection make sure that it doesn't uh, 
get oil all over the uh, letters or whatever. Not that I think for a moment a Pinto engine would throw any oil anywhere. <laughs> anyway, let's do that. Okay, that's all the 12 mil heat shrink done now. We've uh, put over the clear as well, so they're all nice and protected. So those are ready essentially for termination, but we'll go on now and do the uh, the 19 mil stuff, the bigger ones. Um, so let's get those labelled up, and then we can get some terminations going on. Radio all labelled up. Uh, it's starting to actually look like a, a bit of a wiring loom now. So next up is to actually terminate said loom. So again, don't don't get cheap connectors they're loads on ebay but just get genuine ones like uh, te or or delphi uh, just just don't mess about uh, these are our injectors these are ev6 um we've got a few ev ones which are for uh cooling temperature sensor inlet air temperature sensor and this is for our crank sensor we've got a three pin um bosch ev1 style connector three pin one for our um distributor and then we've got our six pin jpt for our wideband supplied with the max ecu kit um, I'm going to use a Delphi weather pack connector for the fan in this instance and we've got a nice little DT connector for our auxiliary port for any extras that we'll want to put on in the future so um, yeah we'll get on now terminate that loom and then that's the loom done happy days ta-da and there we go um, everything's terminated we've got our uh, um, earth ring terminals injectors everything's ready to go perfectly acceptable braided loom um, looks quite fancy so we can now get it on the car um, do a few other bits and pieces. We've got to wire wire in the uh, the fuel pump and the fan. A couple of other little bits and pieces that I've discovered. Um, then yeah, we're ready to get first turn of the key. It's all exciting stuff. Okay, so engine bay now. We're fairly there. Um, loom is installed. Everything runs down the chassis leg there. We've got like the the ignition coil down here. Obviously, it plugs in. I've installed a slightly smaller fan that fits in just nicely because I've had to move the radiator forwards to um, avoid our, our crank sensor down there. There's only a couple of little bits and pieces I'm going to do under the engine bay now. Other than that we're pretty much ready to go. One of them is to lose this. Uh, the old uh, car had, uh, the, or the old setup used to have like a normal fan switch which just ran the fan on by via a relay. We've binned all of that off and we're using the ECU to control such things. So. I've got a, an Allen headed blank coming in just to tidy that up a bit so we can lose the lose the switch. Um, the other thing we're going to do is obviously we've now added a, quite a lot more electrical load onto the vehicle, um, especially the fuel pump and such. They'll be drawing some fair current. So the, the alternator, we're quite fortunate it already is an uprated, uh, an uprated alternator. However, it's only got one of the connections, um, one piece of 6mm squared cable that runs round to to the charging system so we're going to upgrade that as well we're going to make sure we can utilize the entirety of the current of the alternator so that we're not going to fall over ourselves and cause any sort of drama um, further down the line so uh, yeah let's uh, what we do now is we'll lift the car up um, we'll run this extra bit of wiring in round from the alternator uh, and then we've just got some little bits and pieces inside to do. We'll fit like a, a little relay box in up under the dash next to the ECU. We're going to run a couple of cables back to the fuel pump and then we're uh, ready for turnkey. It all seems so quick when you watch the video back. It takes bloody ages. Right, let's go and do that. Okay, I'm adding in uh, our alternator plug. We've got two big, nice, uh, nice big old thick cables there. Um, we're going to run them back to our charge, to our charge point on the back of the starter. But I've decided just to pull back a lot of the loom here because it was all uh, it was actually very wet inside interestingly as well so I pulled back some of the old PVC um, and we'll wrap it in some Tessa tape and put it back up so yeah just stripping it right back through really just make sure it's a good job and we'll put some uh, heat proof around here because it's, it's now quite close to that manifold so um, yeah we'll put some fiberglass um, heat proof around there um, yeah okay let's finish this up Okay, pretty much finished up under the car now. I'm gonna bring it down for the last time before we start doing a few bits and pieces um, inside the car. I've got a couple of relays um, for the fuel pump and the and the rad fan. Um, once we've done that, once it's down, um, you know, we're, we're pretty much ready to, ready to rock. So um, just a couple of things whilst I'm under the car before I bring it down. We, we've changed the manifold, obviously. Um, so the wideband had to be modified. So what I've done is um, just put in this, this small, 
piece of pipe between the proper Simpson manifold and the older exhaust. I suspect Will will change that at some point, but I just, like I say, this wideband can live here for a minute, and if, if the new exhaust builder wants to put this wideband in the main exhaust, then so be it. The wire for that just goes up over there. Um, and then, obviously, I, I don't know if I remember uh, coming down through the fuel lines for the, the fuel pump is, uh, the fuel filter and such like is all all ready to go. I've been round and tightened it and just paint dropped every single bolt that's to do with the fuel system. So, yeah, I think we're ready to come down now. Um, get this relay box in and uh, see if she'll start. Okay, so all I've done now really is um, in up under the dash there, I've got two little relays, one for our fuel pump and one for our fan. Both of those are integrated into the car loom and we use our GT150 connector off of the loom we built for the engine bay to plug into the car. All fairly basic and straightforward. Hopefully you'll be able to deal with all that, no problem at all. Um, hopefully this episode has given you some insight into how I would put together like a, a, a road spec car loom and hopefully it will help you out putting something together for yourself. Um, so that's about it for this episode. I'm going to now move on to, hopefully you'll join me in episode 5, where we will run through um, the basic engine data and injector characteristics, all of those things that we need to get into the M-Tune Max ECU software before we start our engine. After we've done that, after we've got it running, we'll be popping it in onto the dyno, which hopefully you'll join me with too, and you can see roughly what we get up to, um, steady state tuning, something like this. Um, until then, um, hopefully next week I'll put this next video together. I'm not very good at this editing stuff yet, but um, yeah, hopefully you'll join me. Remember to like and subscribe. Appreciate it all, guys. See you all soon.